Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a VDB growth effect that's going to be really detailed and cool looking. So how this effect came about was that I was tasked with doing some sort of growth for a project that we are doing here that was supposed to look like really metallic in a way. And uh, while looking for inspiration a friend of mine has shown me this effect which is just amazing it's from uh, it's from the title sequence for the new halo and you should totally check this out because because it's an awesome project overall from from the effects to the look development the particles and everything so after playing around with some nodes in houdini i managed to do this which i feel came really close and i'm really happy with the result so without further ado let's just jump into Houdini and start doing this effect. Okay here we are in Houdini and we have this, this 3D model of a blade that we're going to use for this tutorial. This blade as you can see has been modeled and UV'd and we are going to need to maintain these UVs throughout our effect. And what I would also like to do is I would like to have a mask that separates the surface of the of the blade to sort of what we are going to create for the inside. So we can have like different shaders, maybe add a little more detail with something like a displacement map or something like that. So without further ado, let's start doing this. So first of all, I want to subdivide this quite a lot because I want this to be really detailed when we convert it to a VDB. Okay, now that we have that, let's create a VDB from this using a VDB from Polygon. Okay, now I don't want this to be too crazy of a resolution from the beginning, but I also would like to have some detail to work with. So let's start with something like this which gives us roughly 3 million voxels which is more than enough for for developing this effect and we're going to increase this later to get to get more detail as we we finish our setup okay so i said earlier that we're going to need to have uvs so we have right now a surface volume that's an sdf of the blade surface i would like to have a second volume which is going to be the UVs we're going to name it UV okay so right now we have a surface volume and we have a UV volume and both of these are going to go to a solver sop now for everyone who hasn't ever like used the solver sop what it is it's basically a dop that allows you to use to use sub nodes inside of it and it gives you access to the previous frame so you can always do like an additive effect from frame to frame which is exactly what we are going to do here okay now inside this solver sop we are going to need a vdb add vect sorry Okay, the VDB advec ta takes on its first input a volume or a couple of VDB volumes and then on the second input is going to take a velocity volume and it's going to use that velocity volume to advec, which means basically to move those, uh, those volumes based on that velocity. So to create that velocity we are going to need a VDB analysis. Here, let's make sure that it only takes the surface volume into account because we only want to, to compute the gradient for that. Let's make sure that here it's set to gradient and let's also rename it to well so it's easier to, to differentiate the, the three volumes that we're going to work with here. Okay, so now what a gradient is, it's sort of like normal but for a volume so what it does it it always points 
towards the surface of the volume. So here is like our SDF volume. The gradient, let's say in this point is going to point here towards the blade. The uh, gradient in this voxel is going to point in this direction towards the blade. And if you are inside, they're going to be like the opposite. They're going to point from the inside towards, towards the surface of the blade. So now if we use this as our velocity volume, what's going to happen is that our shape is going to start inflating. Let's see that effect. Okay, so that's exactly the opposite of what we want right now because we, we want it to sort of get eaten inside, not, uh, not inflate. So we can drop a volume VOP and inside this volume VOP what we can do to this, to this velocity volume that we have, which is basically a vector is we can negate it, so we, we change its direction by 180 degrees. We do this with two bind nodes, so we import and export the, the vector. And with a negate node, that's going to do just that, multiply the, the vectors by minus one. So if we right now check this effect, okay, so this is definitely in the right direction, but first of all, it's boring because we don't have any, any detail on the, on the surface as it disappears. And it's also really fast. So we're going to need to create a way to, to control the speed of this effect. So for the speed, we're going to just add the multiply constant here in this chain. And let's use a really small value, let's say 0.1. And this takes care of the speed. You want this to go uh, faster, you increase this multiplier. You want this to go slower, you decrease this multiplier. And uh, it's going to be a bit resolution dependent because as the more detailed the, the, the volume is going to be, the more voxels we're going to have, the slower the effect is going to be. So maybe as you increase the resolution, you might have to increase this multiplier by, by some amount in order to, to maintain the speed. And for the detail, we're going to use a noise I'm a big fan of, of the turbulent noise set to sparse convolution. Now, one problem with, uh, with sparse convolution is that it ranges from minus one to one. So if we just multiply this here, What's going to happen is that while well, some areas are going to to get smaller as they are right now, some are going to to inflate again because those minus one values multiplied by by this is going to g give us a positive value back. So in order to fix that, let's just clamp down this so it only ranges from zero to one. And let's see what we got. Okay, as we can see, this is this is the effect right now, but we can improve on it a little bit. First of all, let's increase the resolution right now. Let's go to maybe half the voxel size. 
so right now we have let's see 12 million voxels which i feel is a decent is a decent resolution for this kind of effect and to put all those extra extra voxels to good use let's create a secondary noise that's going to be much smaller we do that by increasing the frequency to 5 let's also maybe increase the turbulence of the first node a bit so we have more detail from that and now what we want to achieve with this noise is just some extra surface detail so we don't want it to compete so to speak to to this noise we would just want it to affect like maybe the last 10 percent of of the of the amount this noise pushes down on the surface so let's fit this between 0.9 and 1 so it only affects like the last 10 percent of this noise let's multiply it here okay and right now I feel like the VDB part is, is ready. I'm going to create a flipbook from this and we'll come back after that. So we are back. Two things I did while the recording was paused. The first one was that I went inside here and I increased the frequency of the second noise by two. So it previously was five, now it's 10. And I did that because I felt like I wanted the the secondary detail to be much finer than it was and the second thing I did was I cached this so it would be easier for us to, to work with so here is the effect I'm really pleased with the detail and how it looks like if uh, if you wanted this to be like more of an evolving moving thing you could add like a really really slow offset to the noise so it's not it's not static and these areas would not appear like like sort of islands that are not affected by by the noise in any way but for this sort of metallic growth effect that i'm going for i like it more like this with those static areas and then the the other areas that get affected in affected and eaten out so right now we have this effect as a vdb but we can't actually render a vdb properly using either octane or redshift which is the render using render engines i'm usually using so let's convert this back to a polygon using the vdb convert let's set these to polygons and here we are now to get our to get our UVs back, we're going to use a little bit of X. You can do this with Vops too, but I'd rather do this in Vex. So what we are going to do is we we'll need to sample this UV volume that we have here which is a vector so we're going to say that add UV is equal to point to volume sample V because this is a vector from the second stream the volume is called UV and we want to sample at the current position and as you can see our UVs are back and another thing I would like to have here is some so sort of mask on these areas so I can apply a displacement to them if I want to I can em emit particles from them if I want to and uh, in order to do that we're going to play a bit more with VDBs going to need a VDB combine node and what we are going to do is we are going to subtract from 
our original VDB that we made, our deformed VDB or eaten out VDB and let's set this to subtract. Okay, and now if we input this here, we can say let's initialize our color with black. Now let's create a condition and say that if volume sampled from the second input, from the third input called surface sampled at position P, if this value is smaller than, let's create a parameter here, let's call it so value then our color is going to be white and now if we play with this ISO value a bit we can separate these areas now one thing we can also add here is some attribute blur to smooth out those edges Okay, so what we did here is we created sort of the opposite of our volume and then we made sure that the points that sort of fall within this range of that surface are getting colored white and that the other points that are not affected by this are staying black. So right now we have the mask, so this is the effect, we could cache this out again. After caching this out, right now we start with like a complete blade and we finished with the eaten out blade. So in order to basically reverse this, so we have growth instead of areas disappearing, the quickest way to do this is with time shift. And in this time shift, we're going to use this expression. And what this means is that from the last frame, from the, uh, the value of the last frame in the simulation, so if this has 120 frames, this is going to be 120. We subtract the current frame. So right now we reverse the time of of this cache and here is how we get we get the growth effect so this was the tutorial i hope it was helpful for you and i hope you understood everything that i tried to explain here and if not make sure to leave it in the comments and see you in the next tutorial bye bye